Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Operation 18 podcast. I'm Dane. And I'm I'm Double. Oh, well. (laughs) (laughs) Alright. So, this is the third podcast. Um, And the reason for that is because I took a nine-month gap between one and two. So, two and three, the gap is maybe like a month. So, yeah, let's let's make sure I don't do that again. Um, yeah, that, that's that's a quite a while. Yeah, and so you are the second guest to ever appear on the podcast. That's not Stephen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. So, uh, what do you think about all the? Uh, what do you think about the Disney and Fox merger? Or merge, I should say. Disney is merging with Fox? Yeah, uh, 21st Century Fox. Oh, I-, I thought, like, the TV station Fox, and I'm like... Oh, yeah, yeah, them too, them too. <laughs> really? Pretty, pretty sure it's them too, yeah. <laughs> like, I think I think Fox oh is getting God. to keep... Fox is getting to keep uh, FX. Okay. And, like, FXX. And is is Simpsons going to be... Disney fight? No, I don't think so. I think it's yeah, like I that, think it's like that's all a part of FX. all the Star Wars episode one through six. All the distribution rights for that will be Disney's, and then like the X Men will be Disney's, and you know. I think Disney's gonna run into an antitrust thing sooner or later. Um, I don't know. It's weird. I think they found some like loophole. Where it was like they just they just like acquired assets. They didn't actually buy Fox. They just acquired uh, oh, like, assets. <laughs> we have control of you, but we don't own you, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Delta's been doing that with Southwestern. Not that that matters, but <laughs> it's a similar situation. Yeah, apparently. Uh, uh, I guess. It poses a threat to Netflix, is what I'm reading. Which is uh, really yeah, because uh, I know Rogue One was on Netflix. Yeah, and so Which, is uh, um, so is so, so at least they're working together. Yeah, I mean, so is Doctor Strange and Civil War, and then I think they just put Guardians of the Galaxy two on there. Uh, which is also Disney property. Oh, really? Yeah, all the Marvel Cinematic Universe stuff and all the Star Wars stuff is just Disney. God, everything so, really is controlled by Disney, though. Like, all that stuff that Fox owns from Marvel is yeah. going to Disney now. So, like, yeah, okay. so like if you want to see Wolverine or Professor X in an MCU movie, that's completely possible if this goes through. Wow. Yeah, like, Deadpool can show up at any point. Just, be good. You know, it's like the whole Sony with Spider-Man thing, except Sony still technically owns Spider-Man, and they make mm. that very apparent. Like I, w- I was watching, <laughs> I was watching Homecoming with my girlfriend, and she, w- we just like would point out every Sony reference, like their logo is in the credits about fifteen times, and then at the very end, after the like Spider-Man will return thing, it moves down the screen and just says, "Just remember, kids, Sony owns Spider-Man." Still, <laughs> and it's like, dude. It really said that. <laughs> it's like it just says, "Spider-Man's a Sony property." <laughs> it's like nice. we forgot. It's the very last yeah. thing you see in the credits. Nice. Uh, properties. I don't yeah. understand it. Yeah, I'm surprised Disney's trying to get Fox. I mean, it makes sense, but man, I they're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna have to make close some sort of loophole on Disney, or else Disney's gonna be like the one company. Yeah, like Disney's trying to acquire everything, and it is. I'm having to like look up Disney sub companies because I know they own like a shit ton of properties. They own Marvel Entertainment, uh, Walt Disney Studios, obviously, uh, Walt Disney Pictures, Walt Disney Animation, ABC Studios. Touchstone Pictures, which I've never heard of, uh, yeah. Disney Nature, Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment, uh, Disney ABC Domestic Television, Lucas Films. Uh, I think they own A and E. 
It's like okay. ridiculous. I'm pretty sure didn't don't like Marvel and Lucas films work together? Cause I, I wouldn't I, have been surprised if they did at one point. Because I know that Marvel Comics releases all the Star Wars comic books. Cause I, yeah, maybe I have, on the comic book side. Yeah, because I own a ton of comic books like that are Star Wars, and all the new ones that I have have the Marvel logo on them. Oh, wow. Yeah, like I have like old ones that were released in like the 90s that are just Lucasfilms produced, and then you have like the ones that I have now that have just Marvel Comics plastered in the corner. So, they're definitely yeah. utilizing everything. Yeah, um, funny enough though, uh, when did you say they, uh, like, around what time did they start trying to, or like, that word got out about Disney trying to take over Fox? It was like, um, maybe a month ago? Maybe a little less than that. Yeah, because, uh, Basically, uh, at the beginning of December, on the eighth, it started. There's their uh, Disney's stock price uh, went up quite a bit, and uh, oh yeah, I heard, I heard then, about that. And then on the nineteenth, it's just like nope, and goes straight back down. <laughs> They're like, I don't, I don't know how I'm feeling about this. Whoop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, like they, yeah, they, they had a little bit of a questionable moment there. Uh, all right, so also, Disney also owns Hollywood Pictures, which I don't, I'm not sure if I know what that is. Probably um, just a studio set or something. Yeah. What I what I found interesting that I noticed uh, when I went to go see Thor, uh, Ragnarok, oh, yeah. I was I was just kind of like, kind of just scanning through the credits, and at the very end, you know, there's just a jumble of words that you can't really read unless you pause it. Uh, uh, sometimes. Like, something caught my eye when it was scrolling by, and it was, like, all the sound design was done by Skywalker Sound, which is a Lucasfilms, uh, property, and I was okay. like, of all companies, would you have ever imagined seeing Lucasfilms working on a Marvel movie? Uh, like, that was just so out of the ordinary for me, <laughs> to see yeah. Skywalker Sound on a Marvel, uh, property. So I don't that's, know. That's, yeah. I do know lots of companies work together and stuff, but I mean, <laughs> it sounds like they're working together to a point where it's like, oh, hey, I'm in control of you now. <laughs> it's just air quotes. Yeah, we're working together. <laughs> in reality, <laughs> we uh, pay $2 billion for you, so. <laughs> in reality, you owe us. Oh my god, I think I... There was something like... Um, you know how Lucasfilms was bought for $2 billion or something like that? Something I didn't know it was insane. that much, but I knew they got bought. Yeah, it was like $2.5 billion or something. And yeah. the Fox-Disney deal is like... I guess... $66.1 billion? What? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> listen... Fox is not worth that much. Like they're buying 21st Century Fox assets. Yeah, yeah, they 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 they're not getting a uh, Simpsons in the deal, so. Yeah, like they're just getting assets, but it's like for a historic 52.4 billion or something. It's like a whole range. It's from like 50 billion to 70 yeah. billion. That's the range that we're getting here. <laughs> yeah. All I know is like whatever happened to like the Columbia films. I don't know. That like lady at the statue or something. Seen a new things, a new thing for them in a while. I think they're a Sony thing. Uh, oh, so they're Sony. Yeah, yeah, because their thing showed up in Homecoming at the very beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah, parent parent organization is Sony Pictures. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like it even even like when the logo shows up, it says at the bottom in small font, a, a Sony company, <laughs> as if you <laughs> forgot. God. <laughs> yeah, it's Sony's just constantly salty ever since uh, the interview. Pretty much. Oh my god, dude! I had to start up. Uh, I recently bought like a bunch of the Lego Star Wars games. Uh, just you know, nostalgia trip. I bought the complete saga. Um, which is like 
really old, but like it's it's a very difficult on the computer. It's it's super easy on the DS, but it's extremely hard on the PC. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is fun. And then I bought Lego Star Wars: The Force Awakens, which obviously is pretty new. And yeah. I started up the game. And it took it like a whole minute to start because they just had logo <laughs> after logo. Like one of them was the Di- – like I think one of the last ones was the Disney castle thing. And I, okay. I was just like at this point, I wouldn't even care if that castle got bombed. <laughs> like just start the game, <laughs> please. Yeah. And I thought the Lego Batman intro was long. Oh my god. <laughs> god, I love the Lego games though. I know. I just wish it was easier to skip through the intros. Like the complete the complete saga game, uh, you would start it up and it would just say the first thing it would say to you, I think, is just a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And then it would do the logo for the game. Sony. It would <laughs> the, <laughs> the game would start right away. There was no logo. Cause I don't oh, think the God. I don't think the people making the game cared. To put their logo yeah. on it. Yeah. That was like, see, that's the way the game should be. They shouldn't take six years to load. Rockstar is <laughs> the same way. Rockstar just shows, like, their Rockstar logo, and then it starts. Oh, God. Speaking of, like, yeah, uh, splashes of logos, the Georgia one on, oh. uh, what's that game? Smite? And all the other games made by the same people, I think it's like Take Two Interactive. Yeah, they have the Georgia, <laughs> like a Georgia 3D logo oh, in, in their loading scenes. I don't <laughs> know. I think it's some sort of like tax thing. That sounds really out of place. Advertise Georgia. They get some sort of tax exemption for their game. Oh, I don't. I don't know. That sounds odd. The only place I ever remember seeing, like, the Georgia logo is, like, movies that were shot and, like, edited in Georgia or DVDs of, like, live events that happened in Georgia. Like, WWE DVDs. Like, they'll just show at the very end the peach and say Georgia or something like that. Yeah, yeah. My bad. It was High Res Studios. High res studios. I I feel like I they, they okay made... yeah. I have Smite on my computer because I was like, dude, what's this high res folder on, <laughs> in my program <laughs> files? Yeah, it's shady as crap. Um, but yeah, in this when you start up Smite, <laughs> the Georgia logo is splash. It's really weird, and it's like a really really crappy 3D model version of it. Oh my God. <laughs> How how long does it take to get through that? Smite? Uh, I think the splash is only about probably five seconds. Huh. But the loading for Smite is insane, and I... <laughs> I uh, it's terrible long loading time. Hmm. So, by the time this podcast comes out, and even when we're recording it, uh, Christmas is over. Yes. It... <laughs> How was... It was it was over when we started recording. <laughs> um, how was your Christmas? It was actually pretty uh, decent. I got mostly all the stuff I've been needing or wanting, and that was appreciated. Aside from the fact that I got one of those like prepaid cards, yeah, and I'm like, oh yeah, good. I can finally, you know, I don't want to use my own card on G2A since that's <laughs> kind of shady. So like, ooh, a prepaid prepaid card, perfect. Yeah. Your card is now active for in-store purchases only. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, so so I can't use it online. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a prepaid card, like a Mastercard. And it was yeah. like, it. I tried to use it. Like I registered it on the website that it told me to. Yeah. Or at least yeah. I thought I did. I, I have the same exact thing. Well, at least I thought I did. It because, did nothing though, didn't it? Yeah. I was like, Does why nothing. am I not able to do anything? And so we call the yeah. company, and they're like, well, 
it just didn't register it the right way. And it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, mean? there's not even a register button. When you click register, it's like, give me your address. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine didn't Fuck. do that. Mine was like that really old, like 2009 basic layout. Prepaid gift balance. It was like a, com. yeah, something like that. It was like prepaid yeah. balance, like gift balance. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I went on there. The same one I, did. I entered the number, entered the yeah. other number, hit enter, and, and it was like, here's your card. And I was like, oh, cool, it's registered. Went on nope. like eBay nope. and tried to order something, and it wouldn't nope. go through. And I was like, dude, it does nothing. Yeah, and then I went on Steam, tried to buy games, Nothing. and it was like, oh. And yeah, then... careful when adding cards to Steam, because uh, every time you add a new card to Steam, uh, it, like, locks any transactions on your account for a day or two or something like that. Hmm. Just well, in case you're, like, stealing credit cards or something, <laughs> and it's, like, trying to discourage it. Well, I mean, I've only used a card on Steam once, so. Yeah. I think I'm yeah, say... well, it's like, if it's, like, Oh, dude, a great deal out. Let me go ahead and uh, add a new card so I can nope. buy that. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> your account's locked for a day. Who are you Whatever. trying to steal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, like, it's best to just, like, I don't know, go on to G2A and do it. And that's what I was trying to do. I don't know. It was, I was like, that's never happened to me. One, I've never had to ever register a prepaid yeah. card. I've never Neither had to do that. I. Like, I Whatever usually just brand get... this is, they're not going to exist after this Christmas. Yeah. I, I got a MasterCard one. I've never had a MasterCard yeah. prepaid card. Yeah, I got a MasterCard and a Visa one. Yeah, the Both Visa... from the same place. Visa and American Express are the only ones that I've ever gotten, and I've never had to register them. Yeah. I can yeah. just Whatever automatically this... start using it. Yeah, whatever this prepaidgiftbalance.com site thing is, it's awful, and if you ever try and get a card from there, don't. Maybe it's because I worthless. bought... Maybe it's because it was bought from Kroger? I don't know, because I looked up the website on uh, the internet, and it said in the SEO Kroger. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. odd. And then I click on the website and, like, no mention of Kroger at all. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. Be... And then I checked the receipt, right? <laughs> We bought it from Publix. Yeah. yeah. Bought it from Publix. <laughs> I was like, okay, what's going on uh, here? <laughs> uh oh. Uh, uh, like um, Publix and Kroger's just like tiptoeing into public stores, placing their cards. <laughs> Publix is just like, dude, they'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> they'll never be able to use these cards. Did you try to enter the URL into the actual URL bar first? No. I just Googled it. Yeah, because I entered into the URL bar, didn't work, Googled it, it worked. Exact yeah. same URL. Yeah. And then I checked, I don't think I did anything wrong when I typed yeah. it in. And I was like, okay, dude. <laughs> yeah. I am so mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm mad because I got two, uh, both for $25 and both don't work. I got a Visa and a MasterCard version, which is weird that they have huh. different brands. Well, we called the company, and she was like, well, you didn't register it right? And then she registered it, and like an hour later, it worked. And I was like, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you so call, the call them and yeah. still be able to use it? You call the company, and then they're like, okay, enter your card number, and then you enter it, and then they say like on the thing what your balance is. It's like all a robot. And then you say what your balance oh. is, and then you go into the keypad, and it'll ask you like, do this and the press this. Yeah, and yeah. then it's like if you press eight, it'll connect you to a customer service person, and you have you'll to tell you'll be them, like, "Hey, hey, my card. hey mama <laughs> mia!" Your website doesn't work. You'll just be like, "Hey, mama mia, my card doesn't work," and then they're like, "Okay," and they <laughs> they <laughs> okay, register. Shut up. They register it for you, and are like, "Okay, so wait uh, about." An hour or so. I mean, usually it only takes about fifteen minutes, but if you want to be safe, wait an hour. And it's like okay, and then you hang up, and that's it. Yeah, that's that's really good to know. I'll I'll definitely uh, call the number and register these so I can use them, <laughs> since their website clearly does not work. Yeah, so I ordered a uh, mouse pad. Like oh yeah, a, like a like a full debt, not like a full desk, but like a really yeah, huge, like a huge mouse pad, and it's like a map of the globe. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and so I ordered it, and it's like okay. You can either get it shipped to you by the 29th, which is free. 
Yeah. Or you can get expedited shipping, which is a hundred dollars, and it <laughs> and it still comes on the twenty ninth. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, where are you buying it from? Amazon or uh, eBay? Something. What? <laughs> it was eBay. Oh, so <laughs> that was sounds the, like the person was like, ha, I been, yeah, I have been using shipping. eBay. I have been using eBay for about nearly ten years, and that Why? is the, that is the, just you know like stuff that you can't find on stores that are like old Lego figures that the company lost the licensing to, yeah. so I want to buy them. Like I have the yeah. old uh, version of Mister Freeze from the first Lego Batman game. Nice. As opposed to the new version of it. <laughs> nice question mark. Yeah, I bought Super Mario 64 for the DS off eBay, just stuff like that. And that's the first time I've ever seen like an option for expedited shipping that's that much, and it still comes on the same day that the free shipping does. I was like, dude, what are you trying to pull here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <sighs> that is, yeah... Um, I got a mouse, and it's nice. one of the Logitech ones where it has like a, a toggle on the scroll wheel. Oh, I'm so sorry just, for like, you. No, I love it. Like you can press it. And oh no, it just I, I, I'm talking about the long term. Spins. Long term, I feel so bad. Yeah. Oh my god. What's, what's wrong with the scroll wheel? Will it break I after had, a while? No, the scroll wheel will be fine. It's the rest of the mouse that you have to worry about. Um, yeah, the magnet bottom where you take off the bottom to put in weights. Yeah. That's a little weird. I can imagine that getting loose and breaking on me. But, like, the warranty is, like, five years, so... Well, yeah, I mean, that's good. Uh, the mouse... I'll have to check the warranty on my mouse because I've had uh, the old Logitech mouse just kind of sitting on a shelf for about uh, about a year now, and I've had it for three years. During, yeah. like, towards the end of its cycle... Um, let's just say the left mouse button got jammed. Oh, yeah. So, like, I had to basically smash the button in to be able to register it as a click. And then towards the end of its run, the right mouse button started doing the same thing. And oh, yeah. it was really bad. And it's like, well, the mouse wheel still works. Oh, what we <laughs> do? Scroll up to left click and scroll down to right click. I'm not going to lie, the conversion to a uh, a gaming mouse was pretty easy. I got used to the whole not having the, like, the scroll lock. I got used to not having that anymore really fast. Because oh, I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't really yeah. use it for anything. I would go on CSGO, unlock the scroll wheel, scroll it down, so then my items would just switch in between each other super fast, and that was it. It was like a party totally trick. Solid. Yeah, it it's was a, great. I love it. It was a party <laughs> trick that would work once, and that was it. <laughs> that was yeah. all I ever used it for. Yeah, for me, uh, it, it's come in handy for uh, games like RuneScape and Eve Online, where to zoom out, it's like you must scroll a mile, and so oh, yeah, it's yeah. really helpful for I, the, I used to that, have the momentum. I used that sometimes, which was definitely helpful, but not enough to where it's like I'm yearning for it again. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not something you really miss. Like, yeah, so far I'm liking it. it it's pretty high quality, and uh, <laughs> compared to what I had before, which was some five dollar Amazon gaming mouse that was a hand down from my friend. Actually, here, give me a second, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, oh, no. grab it and uh, just show you what it does. Okay. My bad. That took a bit longer than I intended it to. It's fine. All right, so uh, yeah, it's it's some weird brand. Uh... Yeah. Oh God, it's bad. It's <laughs> so bad. Like uh, not only that, like if I moved it too quick, it just uh moved really uh like if I move it too quick, it just wouldn't pick up the movement. Yeah. And that was bad. And also. It, it it sounds like like if it shakes like I shake it and sounds there's, like something there's something very very, in very loose and big inside it. Oh no! I think it might be the batteries. <laughs> are there Say any what? Batter- are there any batteries in it? No 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 no! It's uh, wired. Oh okay. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't do wireless now. I've, I've had enough experience with wireless to decide wired is the way to go. Yeah, I used to have wireless, and then it's like... Batteries uh... are too much of a hassle for me, unless you have, like, a large supply of constantly recharging, char Dude, rechargeable batteries. Logitech is, like, the god of battery life. Like, if you get a wireless Logitech mouse, don't ever yeah. even expect for it to run out of batteries. Two years, never had to change out the batteries. Yeah. It was insane. It. The keyboard it's that a... I had from Logitech as well was also wireless. I think oh, I only yeah. had to change the batteries once. Only once. Yeah. And it was because the batteries you... that I was using for it were already kind of used. Oh, that's weird. Well, it's because it was my own batteries. And I oh, was yeah, like, yeah. oh, I can't find any batteries. <laughs> I stole it from the remote control. <laughs> I think I uh, stole yeah. it from a previous mouse. <laughs> I used to have a lot of brand loyalty towards Corsair. Yeah. Since that's what my computer case is and my headset, and I'm going to be getting a Corsair keyboard soon. But, man, this Logitech, like, a uh, mouse and all the research I put into just the company itself, like, their warranty stuff is really, like, a lot of people, like, if you seriously have any issues, it's like, oh, yeah, we'll replace that. Yeah. And, like, I remember when I, <laughs> my headset, the Corsair Void Pro or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I got brand new, and, uh, I got broken. The mic didn't work on it, right? And uh, <laughs> so I had to do that in return. And uh, I, instead of doing it through Amazon, I thought it'd be better to go through Corsair support. No. Oh, no. It, it was uh, one of the worst warranties I've ever had to work with. And uh, it took very long. I was out of a lot of money because they had it on hold for a while. And... Uh, yeah. I don't know. It it just wasn't worth it, and we, I'm like, can okay. We just, can we just take a moment to just shit on every customer service, like, ever? I've only oh, yeah. had I've only had one good experience with customer service, and it was because I was retarded and she was actually helpful. Yeah. Um, I couldn't figure out why my computer monitor wasn't working and this was like a year ago <laughs> and so i called her and oh, she was no. like she was like uh is it plugged in what what um oh it was plugged in but she was like what ports are on your gpu and i listed them off and she was like what cable are you using for the monitor and i said it and, and she was like are you plugging your monitor into the motherboard oh and no. i was like i guess i am and she's like yeah don't <laughs> She was like, what ports were available on your monitor? And I was like, display port, and uh, I think the other one was, I think the other one's VGA. And she was DVI. like, I was, no, I was using VGA. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And she was like, use display port. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I went out to Best Buy and bought a display port cable. Oof. And at, at that, that same time, I also bought my dad bought The Force Awakens, and I told him to buy an HDMI cable for his PlayStation 3. This whole time he's been using component cables. <laughs> I know. I was like, dude, you know why your PlayStation looks like garbage, right? And he's like, why? And I'm like, because you're using old component cables. Yeah. Like, switch to an HDMI. And he did, and it looks amazing. I didn't yeah. know a PS3 could look so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, PlayStations, like, they are so sharp. Oh, yeah. And I was, I saw that. And just thought, what have we been missing out on for the past like seven years? <laughs> like he needs to, I he needs to go back and play all the God of War games again. Oh, he was yeah. he was not experiencing those games in their full potential. Oh yeah, I we're getting a yeah, PS4 I'm, soon. Ooh man, I'm stuck. Uh, I need to get a new monitor. I'm stuck on get this, like an eight eighteen and a half inch. Which is a sin in itself. 900p monitor. Oh, <laughs> oh like, wait. What am I talking about? I used to have a 900p monitor. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, it's still an upgrade from my Windows 98 Square that I used to have. But uh, <laughs> it's still, you know, it's, it's so small. Oh, no. And 900p, let me tell you, the UI in games... At 
that scale just don't work right sometimes because 900p is like not standard at all. 900p in games is like 720p just upscaled. Yeah, that, that's but what it is. It's, like it's, everything is the size that it would be if you were to choose yeah. 720p, but all the pixels are 900p. So yeah, it just that, looks that really help weird. At all. Like it just looks yeah, really yeah. weird. Everything's kind of small, and uh, on a small monitor as well, it's impossible in some games. It's like, oh great, I'm literally like one inch from my screen. Yeah, before I got this, read it. before I got this computer last year, uh, I used a sixteen hundred by nine hundred monitor because it was an all in one computer, so I couldn't like change the monitor. So yeah. when I switched over to this computer. And this is my first ever computer where I've had a 1080p monitor. Yeah, I'm oh, who I'm. Before I'm so that, ready for 1080p. Yeah, before that, the highest I'd ever gone with a computer monitor was 900p, and before yeah. that, it was 480. So, yeah. seeing 1080p for the first time, oh yeah, I was just blown away. Yeah, I it sound it sounds like an ad, but no, this the monitor no, that I'm no. currently using. Is the you you've been neglected all your life? Yeah, the monitor that I'm using right now is the cleanest, most beautiful thing I've ever laid eyes on. It makes it makes my uh, old computer look like trash. It's that great. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Especially since I have the 1066 gigabyte MSI one. Uh, oh. I'm not utilizing my computer at all at 900p. Yeah. And, and it, it's... Uh, I need to get a new monitor so badly. I will say what sucks about a 1080p monitor is that it is almost... it's it's makes it much more difficult to find a good desktop background. Because all your desktop backgrounds have to be 1080p what? or it looks really blurry. Okay, you you went silent for about twenty seconds for some odd reason. Woke. Um, I I was just talking about how with a monitor, that's 1080p. It makes it a uh, slightly harder to find desktop backgrounds. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, like it. See, it I, I, funny enough, I generally always just use the Windows ones. Huh. I don't know. I like to have a custom background, and I will say if you get a background that's lower than 1080p it looks yeah it looks really blurry which was very apparent because when i started up my computer i think on the old computer i used a 1080p background anyway so it was fine yeah. i used like a picture of the giant whale from finding dory <laughs> yeah remember that was my lock screen in class at one point oh um, jeez and I used that, so it wasn't really that obvious. And then I tried to change my background to an older photo that I used to use. Trash. And you can't handle it. Yeah. It looked so bad. Yeah. Like, and now, I don't even use 1080p backgrounds anymore. I have a, I have a dual monitor set up, so I like to have oh, the... Yeah. I like to have, like, the... I think the resolution's, like, 1920 by... Um, or, no, it's 3840 by 1080. That's what it is. Yeah. And so I just I have right. maybe about six different backgrounds to choose from. That's it. <laughs> in the whole world. Yeah, it's so hard to find a thirty eight forty by ten eighty uh background. I believe it. And uh dude, I can't even imagine the people on four K trying to find That's a background. I don't know. Because the resolution I, I imagine it's more common. I mean the resolution for 4K, I think, is 3840 by 2160. Something so you like have that. to find, like, a 2160p background, which is kind of limited. I mean, not as much as it was before, but it's still pretty limited. I think right now I'm using that, like, Star Wars background where it's, like, on one side there's Sith and then on the other side it's just Jedi. <laughs> nice. Yeah, what I'm using right now is just the Windows one where it's, like, a tent and it's out in the woods and it's huh. night and you can see the stars yeah on my old windows xp computer and the stars uh, are clearly fake <laughs> <laughs> on my old windows xp computer i used just default backgrounds and uh i had like the autumn background for a while and then i would switch over to um i think the one with the moon 
yeah. I never I never used the uh I don't think I ever used the hills one that they wanted people to use. Like the most popular one. Oh yeah, yeah. I never used it. I thought it looked like garbage. Cuz it was the uh. like everything that comes with <laughs> something that's default, I don't like it. Cuz oh, I've yeah, seen yeah. it too Default's much at that point. Lousy. Yeah, I've seen it too and much at that point. Yeah. Yeah, here's the picture that I'm using. <laughs> oh, that's cool since it's on the different monitors. Yeah, one my main monitor has the Sith and then my second monitor has the Jedi. That's cool. Yeah. <sighs> Have you seen the last Jedi? Uh the newest Star Wars movie? Yeah. Nah. I'm just gonna wait for it to be in red box or something. Didn't I talk about oh, it with you? Like, spoilers? Anyways. Yeah, I haven't already heard all the crap anyways. Hmm. Yeah. I mean... I'm it... not in a rush to see it. I don't know. Uh, I have, like, a list like... of the Star Wars movies that I like from, like, best to worst. My list is very weird. Makes sense. So, I mean, and I had to, I had to like... like the most? What? It's just which ones you like the most. It's not that strange. <laughs> like I had to slip the last Jedi in there somewhere, and it's it's not too high up. It's definitely pretty low on the scale. It's like yeah. it's within prequel range, but not exactly. Yeah. What I don't like are yeah, the people I... that just completely ride the original trilogy. I don't like those people. Because, like, I think they actually made fun of those people in The Last Jedi a little bit. Because there's just these people... I hear people saying, dude, the Obi-Wan versus Darth Vader fight in A New Hope, best light lightsaber fight hands down. And it's and then they call the one in Episode 3 at the very end, the Anakin versus Obi-Wan lightsaber fight, they call that one trash. And I'm like, <laughs> I just don't think you enjoy anything in life. <laughs> <laughs> you're the guy that wow. wants to drive stick shift <laughs> oh no like come on cause have you seen how slow the fight is in A New Hope and how wonky uh, it was cause of how limited it was by the technology of it's time Ah uh, man I, I, I don't know I, I thankfully I'm so used to just crappy stuff that it's like yeah. I don't notice the flaws unless it's like that uh Nigerian uh, or uh, Ethiopian, oh, what's it called? Special effects. <laughs> I, I just, uh, CGI, <laughs> yeah. like like the Spider-Man thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever seen any of those, but uh, oh man, some of the like, ah, uh, it's hilarious. I think this is gonna be the second podcast in a row where I eat something in the middle of it. Okay, I'm gonna. You eat guys want to hear me eat a cheeseburger? <laughs> Wait, you have a cheeseburger? I have a double cheeseburger from McDonald's. I don't even like cheeseburgers from McDonald's, but I'm hungry. Yeah, McDonald's is pretty lousy laz with cheeseburgers now. Mm-hmm. And McGriddles seen... is where it's at. Have you seen the founder with Michael Keaton? Yeah. Dude, that was a really high when when he but... <laughs> took a when he took a bite of that cheeseburger, he's like, "Dude, this is the best dang cheeseburger I've ever had." I just laughed because I was like, "Dude, McDonald's cheeseburgers 94. taste like trash." <laughs> yeah. All right, so my list of Star Wars movies that I like, best to worst, is mm -hmm. Episode Six, Episode Five, uh, Episode Three, and then Episode Four. And then The Last Jedi right after that. And then The Force Awakens after that. Rogue One. And The Phantom Menace. And then the one that I hate the most is Attack of the Clones. Ew. Who put marzipan in chocolate? Ooh. I don't like marzipan. <laughs> I don't. Okay, like... I, I thought, like, the first time I saw it, I thought it was, like, fondant. But no. Imagine fondant, but instead... It's just crushed up almonds. <laughs> it's just almond paste. It's so weird. Do you know what fondant is? Uh, a little bit. 
basically edible Play-Doh. Yeah. Um, uh, just imagine that, but instead it's freaking almond, and it's like, eh. Ew. It's not, it's not pleasant for me. I know that, like, lots of people like it, and it looks really good. Like, they, like it's truly an art skill, some of the things people make with it. <laughs> it doesn't taste right. It's, like, almond joys. <laughs> are, like, the stuff inside of almond joy is basically marzipan. Yeah. But they taste better than whatever the crap actual marzipan is. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I'm actually wow. kinda starting to like McDonald's cheeseburgers now. <laughs> I just I just ate that burger and it's like the best thing I've eaten all day. You and I, and finished I, it that quick? Yeah, it was a double cheeseburger and I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm ranting about marzipan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, and that's a lot coming from me too because I ate lasagna earlier. So if I just said it's better than lasagna, I think I might have a mental disability. No, nah, it's just all the MSG in your body. It's probably just, yeah, I was really hungry, so. Just powdered cocaine. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get a lot of crap for my order of Star Wars movies that I nah, like. I, 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 I honestly didn't know which ones were each episode, but I do know like the one with the pod racing. Yeah, it's the I've Phantom seen Menace. that one so many times, and I can't handle it. I don't know. The Phantom Menace, um, the only reason I like it better than Attack of the Clones is because the story is well-grounded, at least. Like, yeah. the story can be kind of boring, but at least it's more structured. Because when you watch, like, Attack of the Clones, because that's my least favorite, there are some really good things that I love about Attack of the Clones that is... I've never seen in a Star Wars movie or I have seen in a original Star Wars movie and yeah. I like how they brought that over to the prequels. Like, you know, there's the assassin chase, there's the uh whole thing on Camino where like and then like the chase afterwards with Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. Then the dust guys. Yeah, and then like there's that Coliseum thing where they're all inside that Geonosis Coliseum. Yeah, that part was that, pretty cool. That was really cool. I really like that. But then they would intercut it with like a romance picnic on Naboo <laughs> and Ooh. really disgusting, awkward dialogue with Anakin talking about how much he doesn't like sand and then stroking Padme's back. <laughs> like, what kind of writing are, are we doing here, dude? Sounds like a Lego <laughs> version already. The, the whole movie suffers from the same thing that just the final fight scene in The Phantom Menace suffered from. Where it was it's like... All it's a crappy build-up to something that's actually okay. Like, it was like, in The Phantom Menace, it ended with an epic lightsaber fight. But in between those, they would intercut it with um, Anakin being a nine-year-old and flying into a, tr a Trade Federation ship and blowing it up. And <laughs> cutting that in with uh, that war that's happening on Naboo between Jar Jar Binks and all of his people and all those yeah. droids. And then I think there was like a fourth thing where they intercut it with all the, like with Padme and all the, excuse me, all the other people <laughs> doing whatever crap they were doing. And it's just so stupid. It's like yeah. four different scenarios remember... and you only care about the one scenario where there's lightsabers. Yeah, all I know is when I was younger, the one where it's, uh, he first finds Yoda. Yeah. And then like... Uh, and then later on in the movie, they, like, come out of a dinosaur. When I was young, I thought Yoda's planet was inside the dinosaur thing. <laughs> and, like, the whole time, they're just inside that, and that's where Yoda lives. I'm like, I think I think when we're young, we just kind of blend scenes together, thinking they're happening at the same time, in the same oh, place. Yeah. And that's the big flaw with the series uh, altogether, kind of, is, like, they kind of just slapped random things together trying no, I don't, to force it. I don't think that's like a Star Wars issue. I think that's just like a young minds issue that happens with like every movie. But yeah, like maybe. like with Star Wars, the original trilogy managed to balance like focusing... I will have to say I haven't seen any of them in a very long time. <laughs> the original trilogy, like A New Hope, seems to mostly focus on just Obi-Wan and Luke like on Tatooine and then it would cut in with the Death Star stuff, like whatever's happening with the Imperial officers on the Death Star. 
And that was kind of the main structure. And then they would all blend together in the end. And then in yeah. Empire Strikes Back, it was like the rebellion scenes intercut with all the Dagobah, Yoda scenes. And then at the very end, they would kind of merge. In Return yeah. of the Jedi, it's like Luke going onto the Death Star and then all the stuff happening on Endor. Then they would all merge at the end. The issue that I have with all that stuff is in The Last Jedi, they tried to go for the same thing that The Empire Strikes Back did. So it was like the They're rebellion. Trying. It was like the rebellion, all those scenes. And then it would cut to like Luke training Rey on Octu. Yeah. <laughs> which which was fine. I really liked that. The rebellion scenes were really good, and all the Luke, Luke training Ray scenes were really good. Then they added the third plot line, which was immediately where they went wrong. <laughs> there was the the meanwhile it was like the c- casino plot line from that weird like rich planet mm. where it was Ray and or not Ray. It was Finn and Rose trying to get this master coder. So then they could fly back to one of the Imperial ships, or not Imperial ships, like First Order ships, get on it, disable the trackers, and so then the Rebellion could go into light speed and escape. Yeah. And then they couldn't be tracked. Well, that entire casino plotline, the most boring thing on the entire planet. It was so boring. Like, the whole time... You either didn't know what was going on, or you did, and you wanted to fall asleep. (laughs) Yeah, I heard that many people have fallen asleep during the movie. Yeah, because... Which probably happens in every movie, but, like, I've heard that actually happened quite a lot for the newest Star Wars movie. Yeah, because the most interesting part... The most interesting thing in the movie was Luke. Anytime Luke was ever (laughs) on the screen, it was great. And then it would cut over to the Rebellion stuff, which was pretty tolerable, because it was actually pretty good. And yeah. then you go over to the casino stuff, and you just don't... That's like when you get up to go to the bathroom <laughs> during one of those. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks for the... Uh, uh, oh, crap, what are they called? Intermission. <laughs> just giving you a little just tip. Please, you don't even yeah, have to well, watch it. <laughs> plays intermission music. <laughs> the old, like, 1950s, let's all yeah. go to the lobby. <laughs> To get some there treats. Ugh. Uh, I don't know. It. I just don't understand. That was the weakest point of the movie, the casino stuff. That was uh, easily I... the weakest stuff in the whole movie. <laughs> and then, like, yeah. you realize that the whole casino scenes could have been avoided if the general just told, like, just told Poe her plan. Because if she had told him, then Poe wouldn't have sent Ray and or not Ray, Finn and Rose to that planet in the first place. They would have never called Maz Kanata. All that, so stupid. It could have easily <laughs> been avoided. Yeah. It was so unnecessary. I don't know. It. It could have been avoided. I think I'm done on my Star Wars right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of noticed that it was quite the rant there. That might be a whole separate thing all in itself to just take an like a podcast outtakes or whatever <laughs> i don't know just... i i could also go on for days about ranting about rogue one because <laughs> oh, let's, let's not get you started um i don't even have so to go into detail i could just go overall <laughs> rogue one was extremely boring until the end that was it oh jeez. i could just yeah. sum it all up <laughs> So, I noticed something about your YouTube channel, which this might sound weird, but, uh, how the heck do you have 400 subscribers? Uh, four years of build-up. But, like, <laughs> I guess, I guess, like, three years ago, there wasn't any competition at all, and that's probably where you got most of your subscribers. Yeah, three years ago, but, it was a simpler time. Not really, yeah, not I'm, really, I'm, but, like, it was way easier oh, yeah. i i uh, yeah my my most popular moments were like freaking playing a uh, dead space on my phone <laughs> some mobile dead space clone on the phone it was terrible i don't and know i got like 28 subscribers from that 
I don't know if you realize, like, I don't know if you've ever, like, read all the people that I've subboxed, uh, or, like, seen anybody in my Discord named Timmy. Yeah. Uh, Timmy is a fellow YouTuber, and he's also a friend of mine in real life. And yeah. And he, he, me and him will talk about, we, we don't really talk about YouTube all that much, because, you know, me and his content are so drastically different. But, oh, yeah. But, like, he has mentioned to me before, like, why do I take such a professional approach to my stuff and it's like yeah. i don't know i guess just to not seem very amateur but at the yeah, same yeah, time you're, you're, you care enough about it to where you put the end the extra effort yeah but like at the same time there's that slight amateur feel to it like oh, that, yeah, that's no. that's the approach that we took with alex's mind we wanted it to be more grounded in a sense that anybody could do it yeah well in the uh, in the future yes it will more lean into the whole we're going to make it look very cinematic feeling and it's going to seem more oh, yeah. like a real thing. <laughs> You'll be the new corridor digital, <laughs> but you know, it'll seem like a real kind of show. We still want to kind of keep that amateur aspect to it, but I don't know over time, I guess I just have become more organized and professional. Yeah. But at the same yeah, time, I, I'm definitely the same here. I, I've, I mean, I've evolved from, uh, screen recording on my phone to recording my screen with my phone to actually using a screen recording program on my computer. Like, exactly. It's stuff like that. Like, I I started doing just, like, vlogs on, like, my yeah, iPad. I, and then it would evolve yeah. to me filming myself playing Nintendo games on my iPad. And, no, like, no. I would record it. I would record it on my iPad <laughs> facing the TV. And then it evolved to getting a screen recorder and I would make Minecraft videos. And that was the same process for about two years. And then Steven, I think, bought me Counter-Strike. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And that's when I started getting into other games. And oh, I, wanted, I started drifting away <laughs> from playing Minecraft. And then the video count started slowing yeah. down. And then my content just drastically started changing. And then I got a capture card as well. So I could record oh, wow. console games. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. My content... Yeah, see, I... <laughs> I've had pretty, really, really bad luck with just, uh... How... Uh, just the equipment I have. I... <laughs> I've very... Like, a lot of my stuff was on an old laptop, and it couldn't run CSGO or anything. Yeah. The screen was broken on it, so I had it hooked up to my Windows 98 monitor. Yeah, because I, I had a Windows 98 computer. That's what I started out with, not for YouTube, but in my life. Jesus. And then uh, from there, I <laughs> I got I built my own computer, and then I got a graphics card for it because I was running on integrated graphics for about half a year or just more. And mm -hmm. then my content actually got good, and I was able to edit it because I got couple of Adobe program stuff and my yeah. content my content is still awful <laughs> <laughs> like uh I mean it's definitely changed so much over the past year since I got into the graphics card though because like 3d animation of Hitler dabbing oh my god <laughs> 10 months ago I don't know for me it's like because Timmy tries to hammer it into my head he, he likes to remind me a lot that uh, people aren't necessarily, like, waiting for me to upload a video. Oh, and no. I you, know that. You, I know that. But yeah. he I tend to forget that a lot, and he reminds me of it a lot, which is a good thing uh, to me because uh, what I'll do is, like, if I record something and I watch it back in the editor and I'm like, wow, this was trash – <laughs> I yeah. I edit it anyway, and then I upload it because I think, okay, I don't want to just stop uploading for a little yeah. while. Like the Dane plays, not Dane plays, but the Dane takes Buzzfeed quizzes episode that I recently did. Oh no! I hated that episode. The moment yeah. I uploaded it, the moment I regretted uploading it. Yeah. It, it is the worst, probably the worst Dane plays episode I've ever done. Yeah, that's that's another thing about my channel. It's like, all right. Hmm. Banished. You know, playing Banished. Yeah. That was a good game. 13 views. Mm -hmm. And then 
Random Steam game. 11 views. <laughs> <laughs> Flamingos and Fireflies meme song mashup. 40 views. Okay, I'm noticing a trend. Noticing a trend. Kahoot bots. 231 yeah. views. Oh, man. And then, uh, uh-oh. We got the... Spider-Man pizza theme base boosted and just a bunch of Spider-Man pizza theme memes. Jeez. Those all have over a hundred views. Nice. And it's like, okay, I'm noticing a trend. Don't do serious content. Yeah, I have the same trend. If I do a video, like, my most popular video. Oh, God. Oh, boy. 3,000 Kahoot bot, Kahoot spam bots, 2017 most bots ever this is actually the video that made my channel take off guess how many views it has how many 36,000 oh my lord uh, 222 uh, likes and uh, almost 200 comments hmm. and oh my god it's nothing it's terrible and uh, it, it's and like I hate that that's what my channel is built off of because okay, so it, it's funny that you mentioned that we send we tend to have the same kind of trends I officially now have about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten videos that have broken a thousand views about to be eleven yeah. and um, the videos go as like the most popular ones a tutorial uh, second most popular is a meme of like a song third another meme of a song fourth like another song fifth a music mix which is more <laughs> songs seventh uh this one really started gaining popularity this year instead of last year like around christmas time which it makes sense my parody of speed arts in microsoft paint oh, of yeah. santa claus that That's great. got boosted which i was fine with that my april fools video from this year got 2000 views which judging makes sense even though it doesn't at the same time the video was called orgasm and it, it was two seconds long so if oh, any geez. kid clicked on that thinking two seconds obviously the title is what it is even when it's april 1st and yeah. they click on it i how many dislikes are on this okay <laughs> probably a lot the dislike to like ratio is pretty split and then my eighth most popular video, another music mix. The yeah. ninth most popular video is Carla Zeus. Like, just a video <laughs> called Carla Zeus. And I think it's just an ear rape of CNN Student News. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, yeah, I, yeah I, I definitely like your content, though, is the funny thing. Like, I've watched probably most of your videos by now. At least the shorter stuff, some of the longer videos I can't make it through. Sorry. But, yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it definitely is very similar to my style, as, like you said, because uh, here I have a 14, 13-second video, How to Hack Schools Computers, Windows 7 <laughs> and 10, and it's just me turning on a computer uh, through, you know, like, when you, like, after you, like, you know, like, the recovery mode options yeah. for Windows 7 that pop up. Are you just showing them how to get, like, administration? No. <laughs> Oh, After that, I click boot up, you know, like, you know, using the arrow keys and clicking enter, yeah. and the computer just instantly blue screen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's, 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 that's all 13 seconds is, is just me in the computer recovery options, and then selecting turn on and boot normally, and then I yeah. go crashing. <laughs> I gotta, I will admit, because the last video that broke a thousand views on the list, like the lowest viewed a thousand view video is the video that kicked off the Dane Place series. Oh yeah. Which is uh my first episode of Dane Place Public's Preschool Pals. And I know why it started off pretty well. One, the video was just a one off. It was supposed to be the only video that I made that used the title Dane Plays. Yeah. Um that was the original plan. And yeah. I uploaded it and it started getting a lot of traction, probably because it's an older game. A lot of people might search for it every now and then, and they're like, oh, I see this person played it. I used to play this when I was a kid. Same situation for me. I looked it up, found a download for it, 
and I was like, okay, I used to play this as a kid. I know how this game works. I had to download it because I couldn't find the installation disc from like 2006. <laughs> so I made the video uh... and it blew up and I was like, okay. I made a second one. That one's within the first like uh, 24 videos on my most popular list. It's within the top yeah. 24. And then the third video that I made on it, like right behind it. Right behind the second one. And those are the only those are the only Dane Place episodes that make it into the top twenty four. If we go down yeah. the list, the fourth most popular Dane Place episode is if I can find it. I believe it's uh how is it taking me this long? It doesn't have that low of a view count. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is, uh, from my channel, while you're, while you're looking for that, um, I hate that, unofficially, I am the Kahootbot channel. <laughs> if you look up Kahootbots, my channel is the, 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 the one that pops up, or my videos. Unofficially, I used to be the uh, Minecraft channel. Did you, if you googled Minecraft, your channel showed up? Uh, if you googled Dane and Minecraft, guaranteed I'd come up. Oh, yeah, see, all you have to do is type in Kahoot Bots, there's a couple of websites, and then my video, <laughs> right there. My lord. And then if you filter to videos only, the t two videos at the very top are mine. Yeah. And and it's like, why? You know, I want to try and do serious content, but when I do, it gets 13 views. Mm -hmm. But then I do Kahoot Bots, and it's like, oh, here's 13,000 views. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, so Public's Preschool Pals number 4, which was a very recent episode, I forgot there was a fourth yeah. one, it is <laughs> slow, it's probably going to slowly catch up to the third one, because right now yeah. it's at 61 views, which is a good amount for how long it's actually been out for. Yeah. So, but, um, I think there's an episode of Dane Plays that has 56 views, and that's the only non-Public's Preschool Pals related video. Yeah. Um, in the Dane Place series that has broken at least 50 views and it's the Lego Batman the video game episode Yeah. which uh, actually I was going to do a Lego Star Wars episode and then in the future I'd do another Mario Kart episode that's the plan for that yeah. series yeah I, I definitely I need to change my channel's brand <laughs> Because it's very prominently branded to Kahoot Bites, and that's all I can get views on, really. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I wish I could take my channel more seriously, but with 150, hundreds, actually, I'm, I'm like 170 now, yeah. 170 subscribers, and the only content that I get that gets over 100 views is Kahoot Bites. Or memes? <laughs> memes. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, mm, real discouraging sometimes. Yeah. I'll, I'll close out the podcast on this, uh, talking about Alex's mind, because that series um, has... The latest episode is episode two, and it came out a little over a month ago. Yeah. Which was very weird for the thing that we wanted to do with it. Our original plan was just one episode every Tuesday. Yeah. And then we realized our schedules don't fit that because we don't have all the time in the world. Yes, yeah, um, So, you know, because the only reason that we would even film episodes and get them out that fast was because uh, we recorded the first episode on a Friday. I edited it and then scheduled it to go up on a Tuesday. Then we recorded the second episode the day that I finished it and uploaded it. Yeah. So that Tuesday is the day that we re we filmed it, I edited it, and then I uploaded it. And episode two is my favorite episode, and that's the least amount of effort I put into an episode. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was good. I liked that episode. And we have, like, episode three is going to take some time to make, and I hope we can make that at the very least – or at the very most, and in the new year. Yeah, that's the latest I want to make it. And then, <laughs> like, episode four is gonna take a good amount of time and mostly scheduling. Yeah. Um. 
and just going on from there. We have the first six episodes, not including the first two, so I guess just the next four. We have the next four mm-hmm. episodes planned out. We have the finale planned out. We have the beginning of an unconfirmed... We have the first episode of an unconfirmed season two planned out. And then yeah. four. we have the finale of that season, and then three other episodes uh, planned out for that season. So we, we have it somewhat planned. We just need to find That's time good. and scheduling to do it. Yeah, I, I know I, my schedule is... Like you saw the when the day that we first started talking about the the uh, podcast, it's very complicated and I, I, yeah, I'm all over the place practically sometimes and so yeah, I definitely understand how schedules can be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm activating the monitor capture right now on the podcast, just showing the Google search results for Kahootbot. <laughs> How you're just the first two results? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I like some of joking. these people, some of these people just have one spot. You have the first two spots. Yeah, I. That's I pretty the impressive. Kahootbot channel. That's pretty impressive. It, it, it's not okay. I don't want. Well, actually, I love it. It's great. You know, those videos are literally what got me to where I am now. I'd yeah. be nowhere if it weren't for them. But. I want to do serious content, and let me tell you, the most discouraging thing ever is when you have videos that go up over a thousand views, and then you try and do something really serious and everything, and you go nowhere with it. Yeah, I've had that uh, happen to me lately. I was getting a lot of, like, kind of good traction for a while. Yeah. And, um, like, I'm past you know, my prime. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you right now. My my latest five videos um, before this podcast goes up, like right before the podcast, the the last five, none of them are monetized. Oh no! What like, happened? Like Dane takes Buzzfeed quizzes got demonetized, and the review was requested a month ago. Oh yeah. Uh, Dane plays Mario uh, Heart Eight Part Two got copyright claimed by Nintendo. That somehow, makes sense. Even though the first yeah. episode didn't. Yeah, um, it's a little uh, music or uh, intro it was, it was sequences. Just, it was just gameplay. Really? Because for like, I guess for just a little bit too long, I did like... <laughs> you you, the, you yeah. weren't using Shaq. <laughs> in the episodes, what I do is I'll black bar, like in the Mario Kart episodes, I'll black bar like the top and bottom. I'll put like a color filter over it. I'll color grade it. Oh, yeah. And then I'll put wow. like intense music. And what I did, I guess I did that for too long because... What ended up happening is Nintendo saw Come that on. and Content ID'd the footage. So I can't oh, remove man. anything from the video without taking it down and re-uploading it. That's crazy. And then my music mix I, obviously, I know, like, my I, music mix obviously I, got Content ID claimed, which makes sense. I don't even have an issue with yeah. that. My latest Best Moments montage got uh, demonetized. Really? Uh-huh. I know why. Why? It has Counter-Strike gameplay in it. All, my, all of my... All of my Counter Strike videos, every single one's gotten demonetized. Oh, because of the YouTube thing. Yeah, best moments number nine is going to go down as my least viewed best moments montage. I bet you, because uh, YouTube doesn't promote it if they don't make money from it. Yeah, just a little bit of a heads up. Um, I know for my channel, the strangest thing ever happens with it, and it happened with my mom's channel as well. Uh, yeah, my mom YouTube's, but um, yeah. Uh. Strangely enough, the first two days, on average, very roughly two days, I've had it go up to five days or something, but uh, for the first couple of days of the video that I just upload, it's demonetized. Yeah. And then suddenly it's not. I'm like, okay. Well, what's dumb about that is I'll submit a request, right? Oh, see, I don't do that. I just wait the extra two days and then it's monetize it again and i'm just so confused i'm like is youtube really picking on the small guys to the point where they just it might recruit another isis member i mean you don't know <laughs> <laughs> only for the first two days um <laughs> after those two days. <laughs> nobody's gonna watch it after two days um yeah exactly and they they claim the revenue for that because it adds <laughs> our plate on them 
And so, that's what they're doing to smaller channels is taking the revenue for the first two days on all their videos basically now. Yeah. I mean, it is weird though because usually when I submit a request, it gets reviewed and either gets declined or they go through. The BuzzFeed yeah. Quizzes video, I don't even care if they accept the review. I just want them to like just to see if it'll work. I submitted Waste that a month time. ago. I submitted a month ago. That's the longest I've ever taken to yeah. even review it. And... Alex's Mind Episode 2 actually got demonetized uh, for the first few hours that it was up until I, re I requested a review, and they, like, got rid of the demonetization right away. And, oh, wow. Which was weird, though, because in that video, you would think it would they would have declined it because there's, a, there's gunshots in it, and <laughs> we're mildly swearing throughout the whole thing. Yeah. So you would think they would have declined that one of all the videos. Yeah. But I it, guess not. It's really random. And yeah. uh, that's something also I've noticed. It's just so random to where it's like, I have a perfect example. Hitler dabbing. Monetized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally a video where the title is called Dumbass Alert. And it's like the, it's my most popular video that hasn't broken a thousand views yet. Um, yeah. that video has dumbass in the title, and it's still monetized. Yeah. Still monetized. Yeah. It, it's it's very strange on how uh, volatile or random the things are. I just don't think the system is working. It's clearly I, not. They they need to have like a dedicated team to just go through and just start reviewing, unless they already have that. Because I have heard that um, they do put a lot of priority on slightly larger creators because oh, so, those are the videos that's, that's that are going to be seen the most. But then they're they're just picking on the smaller guys now. They, I think they actually got a new social media manager, or they just got one for the first time, and there was a robot behind they need it. Need a before. new CEO. Oh yeah, Susan Wojcicki is not, or however you pronounce her last name, is not uh, doing it. But yeah, like. I have, and I have a funny theory about that in just a second, and then we'll end the podcast. But uh, <laughs> okay. I, I will say the demonetization thing, YouTube's Twitter has denied this. Um, H3H3 said that he thinks YouTube, whenever they demonetize a video, they don't promote it because it's not making the money. And the social media manager that runs their uh, account uh, for the YouTube Twitter, I guess is a human now. Because they actually spoke, like, they actually responded in a human way, like, <laughs> sounding genuinely concerned, and tried to clear it up, but they're so, I guess it's just so unbelievable, I guess, because of all the evidence, and how, oh, yeah. and how my Best Moments video is only at about seven views after two days, oh, or three days God, or something. I, I would hate that. Thankfully, I have some very, very loyal some subs on my channel yeah so i generally get at least more than 10 yeah um well my channel's kind of dead but here's my five of point. which are probably always me <laughs> um here's the <laughs> but, here's here's this like little joke theory that i have if you didn't yeah. know susan the ceo of youtube is the sister of the ex-wife of one of the google's uh founders Think of that conflict of interest there. Yeah. I think it was, um, I think it's Sergey Brin. I think that's the one that really? he married um, Susan's sister. And then in like 2015 or something, or maybe it was early, I think it was 2015, they split. And Yikes. that same year, around the time that YouTube Gaming came out, Susan yeah. became the CEO of YouTube. Yeah, there could be a little bit of a bias in there. Yeah, YouTube Gaming was like the last thing that YouTube did right, I feel. <laughs> yeah. And now nobody even uses it, and I'm like, why? Yeah. It's it's actually kind of good. It's very prominent on mobile still. Like, though. if you just want to watch gaming videos, just go there. You don't even have to search. Yeah. It's just on the front page. Yeah. I don't know. It's <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I still can't get up my Hitler dabbing video. <laughs> what a great video. It it's Oh god. You, did you know my haunt you you talk about Hitler dabbing. 
not getting demonetized. My Han Solo dabbing video did get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll put a link of it in the oh, chat man. there. You can watch that later. I'm watching it right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. there's one of him cr <laughs> dabbing. What the heck? <laughs> and it's not a good animation either. It's awful. <laughs> Why'd you make that? <laughs> Ask Miss Witcher, okay? What? She knew about that? That was in her class. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well. Alright. Well, uh, I think it's time to end the podcast. Okay. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this episode. It's episode three. Yeah. If you want to find... Uh, Double EYT. Yeah, if you want to find his channel, it's in the description. Uh... And yeah, hopefully episode four will not be a year from now. <laughs> it will. As prophesized by the Mayans. Um, <laughs> so yeah. After uh, the world ends. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next one.